It can be extremely frustrating for a skill that you spent so much time, effort and resources to hone to somehow at times still feel like impossible to execute upon. And it can be even more frustrating when you're not even aware of what you're possibly doing wrong. Whether you're a beginner or a multi-decade veteran, you would agree that drawing is quite difficult. We might have figured out why. We even sprinkled some tips on how to make it easier. First and foremost, we can agree that art is an illusion. No, seriously, all art is brain trickery. An optical illusion, if you will. When you break it down to its core, a drawing is only a series of two-dimensional lines, shapes, and silhouettes that, when put together, give the illusion of a cohesive form in a 3D space. For this thought experiment, we want you to imagine a cube. Now, imagine looking at that cube from above, from below, from a distance, and on a curved lens. Visualizing how an object would behave in a simple 3D space is already difficult enough. Now, try to imagine a dodecahedron. How would you even begin to translate that correctly in a 2D plane with only a series of lines? And it only gets more annoying when we start thinking of more complex organic shapes. A flower, a tree, a person, and so on and so forth. It's quite the beast to tackle. Representing a three-dimensional object when you're only working on a 2D surface in the first place. But here, we don't only talk about problems, but we also believe in giving solutions. So, here's a fun exercise that you can do in order to streamline this thought process. Try grabbing a picture of a subject, any subject. Then, start by placing said subject inside a containing cube or a parallel pipette. After you start breaking down the more complex shapes, making that object into simpler ones, you'll be surprised as to how many things are just squares and triangles. This should definitely make more intimidating objects far more manageable. Moving on, and speaking of moving, sometimes your hand does things that your brain didn't ask for, as in the lines you put on paper are clearly not the ones you intended for. Yet that grubby finger pile, next to being a nightmare in itself to draw, refuses to cooperate. According to the Encyclopedia of Children's Health, hand-eye coordination is the ability of the vision system to coordinate the information received through the eyes to control, guide, and direct the hands in the accomplishment of a given task. And much like any skill, it's something to develop and work on. We can't give you much advice on this one other than take the time to train your eyes to spot and place objects with the correct proportions and spacing, while having your muscles memorize the necessary movements to confidently and cleanly create and place the lines in tandem. I know, this sounds complicated, but we promise that it's easier than it sounds. A good exercise would be to trace a pre-existing image, then redrawing said image without tracing while looking at it and then redrawing it again without looking at it. Tell us how it goes. It should help to train the aforementioned muscle memory. And eventually, you'll literally be able to do it with your eyes closed. This next one is something everyone can relate to. You spent your time meticulously detailing that beautiful eye. It looks perfect, a masterpiece in itself. Then you zoom out and it looks completely out of place or out of proportion. You would swear it wasn't like that a second ago. How can that be possible? Now, take that idea a step further. Well, congratulations, you have completed an illustration. After many hours of hard work, you take a step back, get some distance from it, or you do the dreaded technique of flipping, or in case of working traditionally, holding your piece to a mirror, and it's the worst thing you have ever seen in your life. This happens because your brain gets used to the mistakes you have made, essentially losing the ability to perceive them after a certain amount of time. To avoid this conditioning, artists tend to either flip their work to trick their brain into seeing a whole new image, mistakes included, or they simply take a break. What can escalate this issue is the fact that humans are creatures of habit, and habits can be both good and bad. And getting rid of bad habits in art is as tedious as it is everywhere else. The point is, don't be complacent and work with intent. An intent to always learn and improve. It's all the advice we can give you on this portion. Speaking of intent, this relates to the next two points we're about to discuss. 
The main one being practice, the word that every artist repeats or lacks thereof. Think of your drawing skill as a muscle. Um, I think I have a better analogy. Think of it as a plant, one that needs to be taken care of, continuously and consistently be fed and protected, or it would wither and fade away. Humans have a tendency to forget things, and our brains and bodies get rid of information and stimuli that aren't used, in order to make room for newer, more useful ones. So yes, you used to be able to draw, but after 10 years, it's only normal to not only forget how to do it, but also feel like it's far more difficult. Because you start at a level far lower than where you were originally at. But the opposite can also be said if you overwork yourself. Excess fatigue can lead to decreased awareness, hand-eye coordination, and overall a much harder and worse time doing what you love. A just balance, you see, that would be the ideal place to strike. This next point relates to intent in a different manner, as in what are you looking for psychologically when drawing? Do you enjoy the feeling of holding a pen, leaving brush strokes on a canvas in a manner and pattern only replicable by you or printer, but that's beside the point? Or maybe the satisfaction of seeing something come to life from the white nothingness of a canvas, given a fresh breath by the meticulous placement of a precise mixture and layers of different pigments and values. No? I get it, you just want to impress people, get likes on Instagram? Well, me too, but is that mindset only sustainable? Do you find the process enjoyable or tedious? A necessary step to obtain a limited dose of serotonin for a few seconds later on? The technical aspects of anything can be practiced and honed. It's like a mathematical equation. Putting the same three lines in the same place will always yield the same triangle, but mental blocks are much harder to overcome, and with art, a medium that first and foremost is meant to communicate a thought or an emotion, the most difficult barrier to overcome is a mental one, which leads us to… it's all in your head also known as the imposter syndrome. There will always be voices in your head telling you that you're not enough, that what you create is bad or not up to par with your peers, and that couldn't be further from the truth, trust me. You are your own worst critic. What we need to remember in this age of social media, where it's very easy to compare yourself to others with superior skill, is that what they share is their highlight reel, not the many failed attempts, countless studies and practice sessions that went into making that one artwork. You can't expect your first attempt to look like someone else's billionth, which is common sense yet so difficult to grasp at the same time. There's a process that goes into drawing the delicate muscles and folds that make a human hand. Yet we have this unrealistic expectation to nail it in one go and have it look a specific way in a specific style that someone else has dedicated years of tedious work in order to master. Lastly, the human imagination is capable of great things, mostly far more than one can achieve in a single lifespan, let alone in one sitting with only the intent of making a single illustration. So, remember that everything takes the time it needs to take. Well, that was a bit heavier than intended there at the end. So, we're saying that drawing is difficult physically and taxing emotionally. So, why are people still so willing to go through that hassle? Well, that's a topic that we already covered in our Why Drawing is so popular video. So, check that out if you're interested. For now, we want you to keep in mind that if it was impossible, people wouldn't be making a living out of it. At the end of the day, nothing beats the satisfaction of overcoming massive mental and physical blocks and bringing to life something only you are capable of imagining. And that in itself is worth pursuing. So enjoy the process and remember, everything starts with observation. You can't break the rules unless you know the rules. And that applies to both what you physically see and how to represent it on paper, but also to yourself in how you react to something and how you choose to relate that reaction to other people. And that is it from us today. We hope that, if anything, this video has helped you to view drawing in a different light and maybe ignited that spark of passion. Feel free to share your thoughts on the topic down below and maybe send this to a friend who might need to see it. As always, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and until next time, happy drawing. 
Thank you for watching as always and see you next time.